everyone. Thank you for joining us. Ask a Piano Teacher Who Cares. And I am Beverly Song Burton, your piano teacher who definitely does care about our young piano. Today we have a special guest with us and that special guest is none other than a piano parent named Judith. And she is just here to share her experience, share parts of the journey about what has been going on since Alex started piano lessons. So let's welcome Judith. Hi, Judith. Good morning. Hello. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to have you here. So today we just want to talk a little bit about your journey in getting Alex into piano lessons and being in piano lessons and how that has been for you. Since Alex was a baby, we played all kinds of music for her. Classical music, pop music, R&B, by, by different artists, Beethoven, from Beethoven to Mary J. Blige. So mm -hmm. we noticed that she loves music. And so as she got a bit older, she went to school at about maybe two and a half. And the head of the school has been in education for over 40 years. And she shared with me that she noticed that Alex really loves music. You know, whether someone is playing an instrument or um, just any song is playing, According to that educator, it's as if Alex went into a trance and would just keenly listen. It was about three, me and my husband Rob, we decided, wow, maybe it would be good to put her in piano because we know it will help her learn. It, it, you know, there's a discipline that you have to have. You have to kind of uh, grow in order to learn to play the piano. So I started looking for different piano teachers, piano schools, I should say. Mm -hmm. And we looked from Manhattan to locally in Rosedale to Garden City, all over. And we, you know, after doing my research on the internet, I saw the Beverly Burton School of Music. Just realized that you're all about your pupils, all about the students, and we thought it would be a good fit. And voila, after a year and a half, two years, you're a good fit for her. She oh, loves her piano yeah. lessons. It's just as good as any piano teacher in Manhattan. I did my research. Gotcha. And, and I, I'm just thrilled that you're local. And I think that's the thing about <laughs> local. You know, you really have to do your due diligence when you are trying to find a local teacher because not everybody in the neighborhood is a good fit or knows what they're doing. I know that at the heart of Beverly Burton School of Music, we want to provide the best musical education for our young people because it's about community. It's about bringing the greatest music education right here. You know, it's, it's, the, it's the best hidden thing, you know? So I'm, I'm really glad that you were able to find me and had comparative things to say, this is the standard that I want for my child and Beverly Burton School of Music does bring that standard. We can still provide the best tier of education for our kids as they might enter different music schools, you know, whether it's in middle school, specialized schools, high schools, colleges, that they get the best foundation that they can. Awesome, so awesome. And that gives me the motivation to keep Keep grinding for our kids. It's all. It's really all about them. So my next question to you is, what was or is the most helpful aspect of our teaching style that really helped Alex to progress in her piano? I think uh, if you look at the book, you know, you introduced the book lately. She uh, a couple of years ago there wasn't this book, but this book written by you. I mm -hmm. love that it's colorful. It's diverse, the kids in here are diverse. My daughter happened to be mixed race. And mm -hmm. uh, you, it encourages the children to practice. The uh, introductory pages I love because it's a short and sweet, succinct introduction mm -hmm. for a four, three-year-old about piano. The lessons are very good if you're a piano teacher working with a student or a parent working with your student who's taking piano lessons. We're able to learn along with Alex. Another great thing for a young child, they're rewarded once they try. You know, it, it has down here Monday through Sunday. And every time they practice, it encourages them to practice because then after practice, you're rewarded with a sticker or maybe a treat. So mm -hmm. I love the philosophy of rewarding mm -hmm. once you try. You're not gonna always get it right. It encourages discipline and practice. So I really love the book, love the, you know, for young children, the colors, the diversity, that's the word we live in, right? Black, brown, yellow, white, whatever. So it, it's very attractive to a young child mm -hmm. to go through this book. Awesome, awesome, wow. 
That's amazing. I mean, I know that we always have conversations about education and about learning. In Eastern culture, they believe that every kid can learn any and everything. In the Western culture, we kind of take on the stance where it's just like, if I'm not good at it, if I don't get it the first two times, then I must not be good at it and I'm going to drop it and move on to the next thing. And I believe that music is not just a class that they attend weekly, you know, um, or an expense that parents write off on their taxes, you know, but it's more a skill that they use to develop who they are, who they're going to be, how they face challenges, how they face their future, how they continue to persevere through the ups and downs that are a requirement of success, that are a part of success. So for me, when you mentioned that you noticed that it builds discipline in your child, I'm excited about that. I am promoting discipline for things that are not required. Right. Taking piano lessons and being able to sit and practice on a Saturday or a Sunday or after school, after they do the required algebra and all the other required stuff. And it takes not more than 10 minutes per day. Or maybe you may get in 20 minutes, half an hour on the weekends, right? Because they're not at school in the weekend. So right. I think it's a great uh, instrument to pick up. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, who has all the time in the world to literally practice? But I began to realize that time to a child can be long. So yeah. the way that I kind of tried to center this book where it's just like, you have a checklist of things to do every single day, you know? Yeah. First we start with rhythm exercises, and then you go to note naming, and then you go to doing the song and repeating each measure three times, and then the whole song two times. So by the time they get used to that structure, they can go to the piano, like you said, themselves and pretty much be independent and get that work done. So um, one child, it builds, like you said, you start by clapping, you start and you're learning to read notes. You, it, it's a building block. You build as you go along. And that's what I love most about the book. It's not just throwing you into get to the piano and play the C or practice, build, discipline, all in this book. Right. And what, what part of life is not like that? You know, like, it's you don't throw yourself into every single thing. You know, we go from a, a infant and we build slowly into this adult. So I think that just understanding that process has helped to take our American children, take our culture, you know, and say, this culture, just do it, jump into it. You know, we're, we're all about fast and fast and moving, microwave society. But to give children an opportunity to build is really the opportunity to show them how life is done. Because half of these children, 90% of these children will not grow up to be professional pianists. Maybe some will grow up to be piano teachers, but we're, we're still cultivating doctors and lawyers and, and right. judges. That's exactly. You know, That's exactly. And mathematicians. <laughs> and, but everything, requires the same building process and we want our kids that's to just be ready for everything and that's what i love about you um miss beverly as a teacher you know you're a piano teacher but you're a teacher even mm -hmm. without the piano you're a teacher because mm -hmm. i see how you work with alex to get something wrong it's not oh my gosh uh, it's okay keep trying keep trying and you encourage her and you reward her when she gets it correctly mm -hmm. it's right so you know, I, I must say thank you on camera to you because she <laughs> definitely love coming to her piano lessons. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I'm here for it. And thank you because it, it definitely takes a village, you know, it takes a community. So as much as I put on myself to make sure that I am 100% present for my students, I always honor parents back who are 100% present for their children because it's teamwork, you know, like, Alex can't do it with just me. She needs you as her coach. So I'm her right. teacher. I deliver the information. I explain the stuff to her. I give her the methods to do it. I assign the homework. And then I pass the baton to you, who is her That's coach. Right. Who, That's who right. And what, I would, yeah, what I would say to families, you can make it a family affair. You have that little keyboard. That's what we did. We kind of make almost everything a family affair. So on a Sunday, you know, you're, you can sit with your child, husband and wife, boyfriend and girlfriend, whatever, play the piano, let the child play and practice and encourage them. Be a ham. Yay. Great. Yay. They're doing good. So, you know, you may, uh, they love that. 
they love that mom and dad praising them. So make it, you know, take half an hour out of a Sunday and make it a family affair with your child practicing. Yep, every now and again, when you can do that, that will help the child. Mom and dad that is so happy. Like once a month, you know? Even once a month. You know, even okay. once a month. But don't just make it a requirement. You have a it, it, you know, praise them, save sometimes some family time. If you only can do once a month, that's okay. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. would help. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree. It helps with the performance piece because when they get to their recitals, it won't be their first experience with sharing their gift. When parents allow or guardians allow those kids to shine their light, even where they are, it, it gives this passion and this love to just want to share it and want to Put it out there and be confident about that gift knowing that you have a support system who's cheering you on along with your audience who's going to be cheering you on so i think that's a really important piece and i definitely encourage um the sense of community where it's the teacher the classroom the parents we're also doing these community service works because we're in covid let the kids do a video send it to family members with a well-wishing phrase to say, hey, just wanted to brighten up your day with my music. So they could begin to use the music as a tool for someone else. So it's not just for them to get praise, right. but it's also for our community. And our communities could be our family. Um, it could be our school. It could be churches. Wherever there are people, that is our children's community. Wherever they are within reach, whether it's virtually or in person, to touch somebody, with their music, that is community, you know? So we want to get these kids to really use their music as a tool for building discipline, as a tool for understanding process. And like you added, as a tool for sharing. Sharing, sharing. And caring, and sharing and caring. I love that idea about them sending their music with COVID, you know, the older relative. Grandma, look, I'm thinking of you. That's really teaching the child not just to care about themselves, but other people. Because they're going to need that to grow into a successful adult. My last question to you is, as a parent, how do you create an environment at home for good practice, for independent practice, and for enjoyable practice? When kids get up, you know, they have to brush their teeth, do all that good stuff, have their breakfast. I, in our house, we encourage learning. We make it fun love to uh, uh play some music for mommy today alex you want to show mm -hmm. daddy what you learned yesterday mm -hmm. come on let's show us and remember mm -hmm. to always reward it's not about mm -hmm. getting the notes right the first time or you know they're going to make mistakes but we reward her she immediately just love to show us what she's learning mm -hmm. maybe on youtube if you're going to do that uh you know um screen time they're old clips of Liberace, the old piano type playing, new school, mm -hmm. Alicia Keys, let's come new school. Mm -hmm. You can play all that and let them watch this. You get excited, be a ham. Oh my gosh, look at her play, look at him play. They're gonna connect that screen of Alicia Keys or Liberace or whoever with playing with Miss B, playing in the house of mommy mm -hmm. and dad. Mm -hmm. They realize it's not something to run away from. And who to say they're not gonna be the next Alicia Keys? We don't know. Or a piano teacher at one of the great um, music schools. We don't know, right? So you just give them, you're teaching them. But again, let it be fun. They right. will enjoy it if you make it fun and reward them. Whether mm -hmm. they got the notes all wrong or right, they did get on the stool. They sat there for 10 to 20 minutes. Please reward them. Don't forget to say, I am so proud of you. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> I love it. This is just so inspiring. Um, thank you for coming to share vision. And thank you so much for what you do, you know, in our community. You know, I, I do not have to drive 45 minutes on a Saturday or a Monday to mm -hmm. some other place. We have the best piano teacher right mm -hmm. here in Queens. So thank you for having your school. You're welcome. And thank you for being a part. So guys, here we have it. Judith Welch Libros just sharing her journey, sharing her experience, sharing her excitement about piano lessons and really helping her daughter to catch a bigger vision of what's out there. Um, and I see her holding up the book because I'm gonna hold up mine. Really love it. <laughs> love it. And
of musical minds. Musical minds is really what we are trying to promote here. A musical mind. You know, not just piano lessons, but we want the child to be the experience of music, to think musically, to think like an artist. And it all starts with the foundation. So thank you, Judith, for being a part of Ask a Piano Teacher Who Cares. So guys, here you have it. Another parent who is determined and persistent to make sure that their child gets the best piano education, not just for the sake of piano, but for the sake of learning and growing and experiencing life and being able to share that gift in the future. So being a visionary, seeing beyond the moment of the first note that they play and just being able to express that forever. So thank you for joining us again. Ask the piano teacher who cares. And I'm Beverly Song Burton, the piano teacher who does care.